Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, hi, I'm Suhanna. If you're looking at the title of this video and wondering, what are you talking about? Trust me, up until like last week when I actually looked up these ingredients, I also believed that you only could remove non-water soluble silicones with sulfate. But that's not true, so let me explain, we'll dive right in. Surfactants are cleansing ingredients that are used in cosmetic products, both in hair care and skin care, but not all surfactants are made equal. Not all surfactants actually cleanse, even though they are considered cleansing ingredients. So there are three types of surfactants, there's actually four, but I'm gonna be focusing on three, which are anionic surfactants, cationic surfactants, and non-ionic or neutrally charged surfactants. We will start with the strongest and most effective surfactants, which are anionic surfactants. These surfactants are negatively charged and they are the ones that are going to remove all emollients, all products, mm -hmm. all oil, dirt, anything, they will remove it. And this does include some non-sulfates. So obviously the strongest of these anionic surfactants are gonna be the sulfates, but there are some surfactants that are technically not sulfates that are still strong enough to remove these non-water soluble silicones because not all silicones that are water soluble are water rinsable. So you may still have to use a stronger surfactant to remove them. If you've been wanting to use styling products with silicones in them, but you feel like you can't use a sulfate shampoo because it's just too stripping on your hair, you do have options that are not sulfates. They are still pretty strong and you will need to condition your hair thoroughly after, but you have options. So if you are the kind of person who wants to use silicones and you feel like sulfate's just way too dry for your hair and way too stripping, you have your options. I will put on the screen the sulfate and non-sulfate anionic surfactants that will remove all silicones, regardless of if they are water soluble or non-water soluble. The easiest way to identify if a surfactant is anionic or not, when you're looking at the ingredients list, it generally will end in eight, even if it's not a sulfate, you'll see an eight ending. This also explains why there are clarifying shampoos that are still sulfate free because they're still using surfactants that are strong enough to remove all the product buildup, all the silicones, all the emollients, whatever it may be. And if you've ever wondered why there are so many higher end shampoos that are sulfate free, but then the corresponding conditioner has silicone that's not water soluble, it's because the surfactant that's used in the shampoo can remove that silicone. So I've noticed brands like Living Proof, Sol de Janeiro, Bumble and Bumble, a lot of them have shampoos that are sulfate free and then they have a conditioner that's supposed to go with the shampoo that has silicone. And I'm like, why do these go together? How are you gonna remove the silicone? They can do it. They've put enough surfactants in it to remove those silicones. Next we have cationic surfactants. These are positively charged surfactants. They're usually used in conditioners if they are used in a shampoo. It's more to add a smoothing conditioning effect instead of having just that like stripped, squeaky clean feeling after using a really, really strong shampoo that generally has sulfate. These positively charged surfactants will help reduce that really squeaky, stripped feeling from your hair. The reason why these are generally used more in conditioners than in shampoo is because they don't actually clean the hair, which is why you may see it in a co-wash. You're not really cleaning your hair, but it is a surfactant. And because it is positively charged, if it's paired up with too many negatively charged surfactants, they will neutralize each other and then the product itself, the formulation itself, will not be as effective. And then last, we have non-ionic surfactants, which, like you guessed, is a neutral surfactant. It is not positively or negatively charged. These surfactants are very, very mild. Just like cationic, they are rarely used for cleansing because of how mild they are. They're usually paired with anionic surfactants just to help emulsify, so get that milky, foamy, 
feeling with the shampoo as well as stabilizing the actual foam that the anionic surfactants will create. So those are the main types of surfactants that you will see in ingredients lists. I will have some articles linked in the description that go way more in depth than I have in this video because this is obviously a very simplified, dumbed down version because I'm not a scientist, I'm not a chemist, I'm not a salon professional, but I did wanna just put together a video to help you guys explain that you do have options and there are different ways to cleanse your hair effectively. One of the articles that I did read that I will link in the description is from Hair Momentum. And the author basically says that your best option is going to be a cleanser that has a mix of different types of surfactants. So you're getting the cleansing, the full removal of the buildup, you're getting the conditioning, the foaming, Everything is balanced and you'll have clean hair that doesn't feel stripped. Anyways, I hope my dumbed down version of this was helpful. And if you did find this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up so I know that you liked it. If you are not subscribed to my channel and you do wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe. I would love to have you here. And if you wanna keep up with me over Instagram stories, you can follow me over there. That is it. I hope you guys are safe. Hope you're staying inside, washing your hands, wearing your mask being okay, and I will see you guys in the next video, okay?